Hi everyone, this is Nikhil Torskar with Geostar Chicago. Really excited today because we are going to be talking with Tim Mahoney, a patient who came in for treatment recently. It's really rewarding to talk to patients who have tried all different types of treatments for the conditions they're experiencing, whether it's surgery or medication or any other host of what we would call traditional treatment modalities and have either not had the best results they were looking for or maybe just wasn't quite doing it for them. Tim is one of those individuals and he's uh, graciously agreed to come speak to us about his experience with Geostar Chicago. So Tim, I want to thank you again. It's really a pleasure to have you here to talk about your experience. Well, thank you. I'm super excited to be here to talk to you about my experience with this process. I've had such a great experience after, you know, lifelong challenges in this area that I very much wanted to participate in a video like this so that we can get the information out about the type of results that are possible when you go through your process. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? My name again is Tim Mahoney and I'm 55 years old and I'm an attorney. My main office is based in Freeport, Illinois. I also have an office in Rockford, Illinois. I'm a trial attorney and I'm married. I recently got remarried. I got remarried during the shutdown. So congratulations to me and we'll see if it's congratulations to my wife. Can you tell us a little bit more about the conditions that you were experiencing prior to coming to Geostar Chicago? So my journey started when I was 16 years old. I, I went to a small Catholic high school. So of course, football was, you know, beyond important. And I <laughs> loved the sport and, and played it with with the reckless abandon, and I ended up with a broken neck. I dove to tackle somebody and hit them with the top of my head, and I ended up with a compression fracture of C5, and I had a paralyzed left arm for a period of time. So I've been dealing with that injury since I was 16, and it's always limited me to an extent, and I healed pretty well, and I've been able to do a lot of things throughout my life, but I always kind of figured there would be this period of time where all of a sudden my neck would kind of fail and I would start to have to have surgeries and the like. And that was kind of the information the doctors gave me uh, all throughout my life, that at some point you were going to have to have surgery and things were going to happen that, that you were going to go down that road and then you were going to be significantly limited in terms of uh, what you physically could do. So a year and a half ago, um, that kind of happened. I did a series of events and my neck made it so like I couldn't look up for long periods of time or couldn't look down. And as I got older, it got a little bit worse. I started having arthritic changes and I rode on an airplane and fell asleep. And when I got up, my right shoulder was down here and, uh, and it, it was pretty painful. And being a guy, of course, I didn't go to the doctor and I didn't do anything that I was supposed to do. And eventually it got better, but not by a lot. And I finally went to a doctor and they did an MRI and I had a, a massive disc herniation between C5 and C6. And the doctor uh, quite honestly couldn't believe that um, I was able to function as much as I had and said, you know, normally I would have recommended surgery for this right away, but given the fact that you've uh, done uh, everything up till now, I was about four months post injury and I was still, you know, doing all my stuff. He goes, I'm not gonna recommend surgery. I'm gonna recommend that you, you know, simply rest it and and let it heal, which is, which is what I did. Did you have any procedures done at that point, or this was just something you kind of lived with for, for all of your life, this injury? No, I, I had no procedures, and, I, and I'm really happy about it. When, I, when the injury happened, the doctor that was taking care of me wanted to do a three-level fusion um, mm -hmm. that night, and my dad intervened, and he called up uh, a, a neuroorthopedic surgeon named Dr. Danaher out of, out of Rockford, and he looked at me and said, don't do surgery on this kid. He's 16 years old, his neck is stable. With, yeah. Within a couple of days, my arm had come back. I, I, I have permanent problems with it. I can't feel certain things, but it works. And they just, they immobilized me for months. I was in a, a hard collar for three, four months. I was in a soft collar for another three, four months, but they didn't do surgery. So I've never had a procedure on my neck other than I just, I did massages and I exercised and I did all of the things that I could uh, to try. It wasn't until a year and a half ago that I suffered an injury where they were talking about surgery. Yeah. And this injury you're referring to, was that when you were on the plane or that was uh, something else? Okay. No, it was when I was on the, on the plane. I, 
And I think it was a series of things that I did that led up to that. But but the, the falling asleep on the plane was the main crux that caused that disc to rupture so significantly and caused the, the problems that I was feeling. You mentioned, obviously, you were a football player, so you're pretty active by nature. But tell us a little bit more about some of the activities and like how this injury was limiting your quality of life, not just in terms of activities, but just day to day functioning and level of discomfort. So when I was younger, it limited me a lot less. You know, I still had to pay attention to it. The biggest thing was I couldn't I couldn't do anything that would jolt my neck. When I was younger, that was the, that was the biggest thing. And quite frankly, my neck felt like like if I wasn't paying attention, if you came up and shoved me from behind, it felt like my head would literally flip off. I mean, that's how you know weak it would feel. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem that I would have is I would get very significant headaches. Um, to the point where the biggest problem is my right trapezius muscle, that muscle would freeze and it would go all the way through my head to my eye. And you could tell what it was happening because my eye would go like this. Wow. And I would actually need somebody to put their elbow in that muscle and break it apart. Mm. Um, and I would have to lay down and rest it for a good half a day. But I got into like my forties that started happening more and more and more, where it was like, you know, I had to really be careful when I was doing things. And so I did a couple of things to adjust. One of the things I did is I got a lot healthy. Um, I, I quit eating certain foods. I found out later in life I had food allergies and food sensitivities, so I got away from those foods. Right. I started exercising a great deal more. Um, 11 and a half years ago, I quit drinking alcohol. Um, those things all help tremendously, you know, reduce the inflammation in my body that helped tremendously. If I did, if, if I, you know, really watched my diet, a lot of water, rich foods, a lot of water, no alcohol, very little processed foods, um, you know, started taking much better care of myself physically and then eliminated certain physical activities, but I still could see progression. So, yeah. um, I actually did a marathon in 2019. I, my wife is wow. a marathoner. And when I, when her and I got together, I saw her do a marathon. So I decided, okay, I'm going to do one of these. And so, and, and I was able to, to do that. Okay. And, uh, and, and I actually proposed at the end of the marathon, I was able to actually get down on a knee and get back up. Wow. But yeah, and, and it was, I was amazed I could do that, but there were limits to that too. I started to have lower back issues and a little numbness in my left leg. And mm -hmm. When I saw the doctor, I said, you know, am I having a problem with my lower back? And he goes, no, he says, that's actually your neck. The problem was C4, the the two thingies where the nerves come out, one of mine was, was blocked. And he goes, that running, you're jarring that just enough that it's causing lower back problems and it's causing the numbness in your left thigh. And it, I got to where I couldn't bend over and pick things up. So I, I couldn't bend over and lift something or, you know, I... So like, you know, my wife and I uh, taking out the patio furniture in the spring, I couldn't help do that. Somebody had to come over and help do that. Mm. Um, I could, if something was in the back of like an SUV, I could grab it and carry it, but I couldn't bend over from the ground and pick it up. Right. So it's kind of wild. Like I, I could stand and talk for 18 hours and it doesn't yes. bother me at all. But if I go to a, um, a hotel, or somebody's house and I need to plug something in, like my yeah. phone charger behind like a, um, a a table next to a bed. Yeah. That would cause problems because I'd have to bend over and look up like this. And yeah. that was, you know, that Those was a big specific, problem. So very things. specific movements would exacerbate yeah. the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could go, I could go run three miles, but I couldn't change a light bulb. If, wow. if I had to look up to change a light bulb, I, that would, I would feel that the next day. I would wake up with a very significant headache. And like I said, that right trapezius muscle, when that baby would go and freeze and, and mm -hmm. um, the, the getting healthy reduced the number of times that that would happen. And yeah. it would reduce how long I would feel the, the outcome from that. But it was but always I, there. What options? So, so Tim, you mentioned obviously lifestyle, but what other options had you tried? Were there any specific medications you were taking? I'm not a big medication guy, so I hadn't tried much of that. I had tried uh, physical therapy 
And I didn't find that to be very effective. In fact, I found that to make me feel worse. Mm -hmm. um, I had tried chiropractic care and I didn't find that to be effective either. I tried more intense massage techniques. Um, so I tried like rolfing and I tried deep tissue massage. I also didn't find that to be very effective. The simpler things were more effective for me. Uh, mm -hmm. So heat, I told you, you know, like jacuzzi, when it got bad icing, I would ice a lot. The one thing, a couple of things that, you know, and I tried when, when the, when it would start to get sore, I would, I would do the topical ointments. I would do biofreeze and I would mm -hmm. do all that stuff. That stuff helped a little. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing that really did help was KT tape. That was very effective for me because it would relieve the muscle. But honestly, I, I hadn't really done much else that had had a significant impact other than lifestyle. You're trying all these different things. Um, how did uh, how did Geostar venture into the equation? So as you and I talked about before this, I'm a big Tony Robbins guy. I'm, I'm one mm -hmm. of his trainers. And so he, of course, wrote a book called Life Force. Yep. And he talked about stem cell therapy in uh, in Life Force. And, and he talked about his experience with stem cell, stem cell therapy and his approach to that. And as soon as I read that, I, I was like, I'm going to do this. I mean, and, yeah. and I, it, honestly, it was a huge moment for me. Mm -hmm. the, before that, I had heard about people doing surgeries to actually, I know that they replace uh, the discs, but they're actually doing surgeries to replace the vertebrae. Um, yeah. They're doing some of those in Europe. And when I heard about that, that was the first time I had heard something that I thought this could actually lengthen the amount of time before I'm very limited in terms of what I can physically do. My entire life, I was like, you're going to hit a certain point where all of a sudden you're going to be very physically limited. And, and right. I, I dreaded that. I, I very much worried about that. When I heard about that surgery, I, that was the first time I got excited about there being an option. One of the things that happens is you just learn to live with the pain is you just, you just go about your life and then you just compartmentalize it. Right. So when I read the stem cells, I, I, you know, it was the clouds lifted. Right. And I sure. said, I am totally going to do this. I know how Tony works when he decides to figure something out, he goes beyond, you know, what anybody else will and, and research is research is research is. Yeah. And I've done his stuff before and I know it's effective. So I knew that I was going to do this uh, no matter what. And then came the injury mm -hmm. and that was the catalyst. I'm like, okay, uh, this injury happened. I said, well, now, now I'm going to do it. You know, now mm -hmm. that's going to happen. And then, you know, I, I'm part of this Tony Robbins community. So we mm -hmm. all talked about it and people started doing, it. people started getting stem cells and we all started talking about, Hey, is anybody doing this? Has anybody tried it? Where are you going? So I started researching as I was doing the research periodically, I would just Google stem cells and then you guys mm -hmm. popped up and, and I, I read about you on your website and, and I was looking at you. I was looking at the place Tony went in Panama and I was looking at another place in Mexico city and I decided I'm going to do you because you were you were close to my home so that way i could go and get it done and i could come home and rest and i wasn't in another country i like these guys i went and met with your team i showed mm -hmm. up and made an appointment and i just felt very comfortable and liked the facility and so did my wife and i said i'm, I'm gonna go to these guys and i'm gonna do it here and then see what happens was there anything specifically about like geostar in terms of like the story like about the founders or in terms of the research. Yeah, that's what drew my attention to is, is I looked at the founders and I looked at how long they've been doing it and, and what they said. I liked that it, that it had been started by somebody who had been involved in this technology for a quarter of a century. Right. It did matter to me. And then when I went there, the person that talked to us was Billy mm -hmm. and, and, and she, in my opinion, she was very candid with us, mm -hmm. you know, she took us around the facility. The facility was lovely. Um, but Billy was very candid with us about here's my experience with this. And I truly appreciated that. I felt like, I felt like 
the the technological side I was in as good a hands as I could be because I looked at the background of the other places and and they were no better than you in terms of how long they had been using this, how much research they had done. Most of them yeah. were significantly less. Mm -hmm. So I felt very comfortable with your side of the technology. And then Billy made me very comfortable with the personal side of it, that you guys were going to take good care of. And, yeah. and I really, I really appreciated that she was straightforward. She didn't, she wasn't trying to be a salesperson about it. She didn't say, oh yeah, this is a miracle cure that's going to cure yeah. everything that you've ever had. She yeah. said straightforward, look, results vary. It depends on the individual. Some of it depends upon how long you've had the injury. She goes, my experience is most people have had, you know, very positive results, but results yeah. vary and it's, it, it kind of depends on the person. And, well, and, and, and the other thing, Tim, that's so important is you're a prime example of this mindset is so important. But then the other thing is your lifestyle. I mean, you're very energetic, you're athletic, you take care of yourself in terms of what you're eating. You can't come in after you've downed a, a bag of donuts and drank a bunch of Red Bull and say, hey, you know, I'm not getting the results, obviously, right? I mean, right. that right. whole mind-body connection that's so important. You know, you're an ideal patient because you've been attending to this stuff on an ongoing basis, right? So there's a lot of patients who don't, you know, and so that's why, but I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, Billy was candid about sort of how the, the saying I use is mileage may vary, right? It, it is not right. something that's like, hey, just add water and I'm back uh, back to the races, so. Right, but, uh, absolutely. I, I I really appreciated that, I, I do. I, I If somebody is talking to me about a product, I, I want them to be honest, and, yeah. and, and she was. And when I walked out, uh, I felt very comfortable and so did my wife. But I really liked her and I really liked the facility and I think you'll be in good hands. And I said, yeah. okay, I'm doing this. So I called up and I uh, and I made the appointment and, uh, and away we went. Tell me your experience with the other staff members. I'm assuming, was it uh, Deborah who was your first point of contact? Deborah was my first point of contact over the phone. And, and I had a great experience with her over the phone. She was very relaxed. Mm -hmm. She was very helpful, a lot of information. She was very responsive not pushy at all, just very, what can I do for you? And she sent me all kinds of material to look at that was very, very helpful. The staff was great. I mean, when I was there, I was the only one in the facility that was being treated. And mm -hmm. I mean, it felt, you know, very special. I mean, you walk in and the whole facility is just for you. And right. everybody incredibly attentive. Dr. Rosemary, lovely, lovely man. Uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed, and again, didn't didn't sugarcoat it. I mean, he told me about the process. You know, here's what you're likely to experience, and um, and and he was very straightforward about it. And I um, really felt in good hands uh, with him, and and that's why I came back when we were in the area a couple of months later, especially after I had met with the doctor and gotten my MRI done. I wanted to come back and say thank you because of the, the changes that I made. And so I am very, very comfortable with the team, very comfortable with the facility, very nice, took very good care of me. I felt um, I felt overly taken care of. I felt like, you know, too special at this point. Yeah. <laughs> How was the, um, in terms of the Geostar team, in terms of follow-up with you after the treatment? Their follow-up is great. Billy is amazing. Okay, Billy would call me up. How are you doing? You know, do you need anything? My recovery was very easy. I had pretty good bruising. I had very little pain from any of the procedures. And they followed up very consistently and I had direct numbers and I could contact people. I very much felt like if I needed something, they were there to help me out. I think it's helpful for patients to know coming in what to expect, because when you say the word healthcare, it's such a broad term, right? Because you've got hospitals, these gigantic, you know, edifices that are like, you know, several floors, and then you've got these private practice that are a little bit smaller, more intimate. So Tim, I'd love if you could tell me a little bit more about your experience with the facility, your impressions of the facility. You know, the saying that it, it feels like a spa, that's very accurate. I thought the exact same thing when I came in, that it felt like a spa and not like a medical facility. And I agree with the recovery room. You know, you start out in one room and then you go to another one. And like I said, everybody takes very good care of you. There's no mm -hmm. pressure. You can stay as long as you need to. 
Um, they bring you food. They bring you what you need to drink. They take very, very good care of you. You feel very pampered. Quite frankly, mm -hmm. that's why I think it kind of looks like a spa in terms of when you walk into it. I mean, it's got that feel and yeah. the way that you're taken care of. I mean, it does kind of feel like a spa. So how about from like start to finish, if you can just give us a walkthrough of sort of showing up at the facility and the timeline like. So once you get signed up, you know, when you come in to actually get your procedure. Now, I did three treatments mm -hmm. and that's what you guys recommend. And, and I recommend too. I agree with with that approach. So mine went Wednesday, Friday, and then Monday. Mm -hmm. and, and so you, you show up at the facility in the morning, eight or nine o'clock, and the doctor, you, you know, you get greeted and get brought to your area. Um, mm -hmm. And Billy comes in and goes through everything with you and makes sure that you're okay, tells you how the process is gonna go. Doctor comes in, goes through all that stuff with you, you know, and then you go down into the surgical suite the extraction process does not take very long. I would think 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I mean at max an hour in order to do the extraction process. So we did two bone marrow extractions, one on each hip, and then we did out of the belly fat in the stomach, mm -hmm. um, which is simply just doing some liposuction and, right. then, and then taking it out. On a scale of one to 10, like how, how was it overall? My first bone marrow extraction was not bad. We got it on the first tap and then he was able to extract it out and then I was done. Mm -hmm. uh, then came the belly and the pain level on the belly is very low. It's, it's, it's a two or a three, but it is odd. It, it is, yeah. a, it, yeah. you know, because you're awake and all of a sudden it's, it's shot, shot, slice, slice, and zzz, you know, I mean, so yeah. it's a little, it's weird, you know, it's right. like, okay, this is happening, but there's very little pain. Then the second tap uh, that we did was, was a little more intense because it took three tries um, mm. in order to get it. And, but between the doctor and Billy, they were very comforting. I'm not gonna say that the pain was a zero. It was not a 10, but it was uncomfortable. I mean, the, the taps are uncomfortable and yeah. I could feel the extraction too, but it's, it's very quick. But I guess if you were to compare it to something like surgery, it's definitely less. Oh yeah. And, and here was the that. interesting thing. After that was done, I had no pain in my pelvis at all. Zero. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't wake up sore. I had no pain whatsoever where the tap happened. I mean, I had to sit in a car to drive home. It didn't bother me. Sitting in a chair didn't bother me. So once that tap was done, my pain was zero, which I thought was kind of weird. I thought mm -hmm. tapping a rod into my bone, I would have yeah. some sort of, I didn't have any. Now the, the belly, you have to wear something for a couple of days and you do get a pretty decent amount of bruising, but none of it's horrible at all. Yeah. None of it's like, you know, Surgery. to keep going as to how the process works. So you, you get into the recovery room and you've got an IV and then the, and then the stem cells go into the IV and go into your body. You don't feel that at all. That's, that's right. a non event and you can drink and eat lunch. Yeah. yeah you're in the recovery room. I, I never stayed in the recovery room. I think more than an hour. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I would eat something. I would drink, drink a little bit and they would do the IV and the stem cells would go in and then. I got up and got out of it. I didn't feel nauseated. I didn't really feel anything. They told me not to drive, so my wife drove. But I was tired. Yeah. You know? But I was fine. I mean, it was like, okay, I got the stem cells. Thank you. See you later. See you in a couple of days. And I would go right. home and, and I would just take it easy. So the recovery room, very lovely. You're very taken care of. I didn't have much of a recovery. Once the process was done, I'd get, your, get my IV. Time to go without any real challenges whatsoever. How was the experience with your conditions after getting the stem cell? What, what kind of benefits are you noticing to your condition, your improvements and, and things you can do now that you might not have been able to do before? Well, one thing I, I, I would like to say to everybody is give yourself downtime to recover. I think give yourself more downtime than you think. I could tell that my body was doing something right away. And right away, I was um, incredibly hungry. I was incredibly thirsty. I would sleep more than I normally did. And my body right. felt, it felt warm. I didn't have a fever or anything, but it felt right. you know, like it was working, okay? Sure. 
And for quite a number of days that persisted. And I know this part sounds weird, but I honestly can tell when it feels like the stem cells are doing something. I mean, I can feel like my body is like it's happening. I, I, right. And I felt like that constantly for three weeks, four weeks. And then now something will happen. And I'll even say to my wife, I'll say, well, the stem cells are working. I can, I can just, I get this feeling. So sure. I would just like to say that don't think you're going to get the stem cells. Yeah. And then you're I can go, go run, go run a marathon the next day. Give right? your body a chance. It's doing a lot of work. It needs rest. It needs food, healthy food, and it needs water and let right. it let it rest. And I didn't do any significant physical activity for a month based upon your recommendations. Mm -hmm. And I completely mm -hmm. agree with that. You got to let the body get caught up. So now yeah. what benefits did I get? Pain relief happened immediately. Mm -hmm. So lower back pain, neck pain, I saw changes in that immediately, especially my lower back pain. I used to have to be very careful about how I would sit. I couldn't sit in certain ways. And I couldn't do this. And I couldn't do that. And I could you know, I couldn't ride in a car in a certain way for too long. And I couldn't sit in the theater chair for too long. Um, that pain immediately started going away. I mean, it was only a couple of days and I bent over and picked something up. And my wife was like, wow, I was like, yeah, it doesn't hurt anymore. And, and I waited a long time to do that. So I felt pain relief virtually immediately. Like the next day after the first treatment, I started to feel pain. I, I mean, it, it, that happened that quickly, you know, the, and that, that surprised me. I mean, literally woke up the next day and I felt like my lower back didn't hurt as much. My neck didn't hurt as much. My knee didn't hurt as much. Like I just had mm -hmm. less pain. I felt like that happened overnight. Wow. And now in terms of the other responses, the more time that passed, the more I felt like things were better and better and better and better. Yeah. I had, I got my stem cells in July of 2022. I had an MRI in January of 22 that showed the ruptured disc between four and five, but it also showed significant arthritic changes in my neck. And the, the two big things that it showed, it showed disc thinning between four and five. And from the top looking down, it showed that the one nerve shoot on C4 was blocked. So now I get the stem cells in July. As the fall progresses, I'm feeling better and better and better and better. And, and I took it very easy, but I'm now bending over and picking things up. My neck feels better. My shoulder feels better. As I get more and more confident, you know, I, I remember something needed to be moved and I bent down and I picked this thing up that weighed like 40 or 50 pounds and I carried it upstairs. And then my wife yelled at me and said, you know, why don't you not do that until we have an MRI and make sure your neck is okay. But yeah, but um, I could just tell, I'm like, I just, I just feel better. I, my daughter lives in California and I went and saw her and I, I bent down and I plugged in the, the cell phone charger. She normally would do that for me. And, and she goes, dad, what's going on? And I said, I can do that now. I can do that. Yeah. Well, how about any, any specific activities? Like, I don't know if you, I, I limited or, that. Yeah, yeah, I limited that. My lower back just stopped hurting, period. I mean, it mm -hmm. used to be, like I said, if I sat in a car, I would have a problem. If I did certain things, I, I would have to like compensate for that. I could just tell my lower back was, you know, I could sit in a lounge chair, mm -hmm. um, which I couldn't do. I could never, I had, I had to sit in a straight upright chair. I could never sit in a lounge chair. I couldn't do that. If I did right. that, my mm -hmm. back would twinge and then I would, I would, be in pain and I couldn't bend over and pick anything up. I mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm laying in a lounge chair for like an hour and I get up and and I look at my wife and I'm like, look, I can I can do this now. Yeah. So then a year later from the MRI, so it was December of 22, I got an updated MRI. The burst disc is hundred percent healed. I was cleared for all activities. But the but the big thing was, as soon as I saw the MRI, the disc thinning between four and five, that disc had, had increased. And that's not supposed to happen. But you could tell it wasn't as thin as it was before. You could tell the curvature of my neck was better. And the doctor's looking at it. And as he looked at it from the top, that C4, that nerve root coming out, it was clear. Mm. which is my lower back. That's the lower back changes. And my neuroorthopedic, when I told him that I did stem cells, 
was less than positive about that idea. He was- You mean pri prior to coming in? Or? That and when I told him that I got, his words to me were, you should have taken that money and bought yourself a nice pair of shoes because you threw it away. That's what he said to me. But <laughs> then a couple of months later, he's looking at my MRI and he had forgotten about the, you know, he forgot what I told him. And, and he goes, your arthritis is better. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And he goes, and then he looked from the top and he goes, that nerve root has opened up. And I said, yeah, I can tell from my lower back. And he goes, wow, I guess the rest did you good. That was, that was his response. The rest, the rest, right. the rest did you good. <laughs> but he looked at me and he goes, you're a hundred percent cleared to do whatever. That's awesome. He goes, you're, you're good to go. And so I guess I don't want to overstate this, but I'm now doing things that I haven't done uh, for years, literally for years. And I haven't, I just got this like a couple of weeks ago, but I, I can't wait to get back into the weight room. And, and I did help carry in the, the patio furniture and I, I moved the, some of the other stuff on my own. And I, when I got done, I was like, wow, I could, the only problem I have is I haven't used those muscles for so long that after I did it, I was sore. What about it, these? Like, I'm, 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 I'm curious to know, uh, Tim, because you know, obviously you're involved with the Tony Robbins events. And whenever you hear Tony Robbins, you think of like Firewalk with me, you know, walking across the hot coals. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying that, to imagine, man. like, I'm trying to imagine what were those events like? Because those can be pretty exhausting, right? Those go for like sometimes 12 hours, 15 hours a day. Like oh, yeah. 18 hours a day. Yeah. What were those um, events like with the pain that you were experiencing? Well, the, the nice part about the events is I spent most of my time standing up. And with the injury that I had, I could stand up all day and I would be fine. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't, I can't look down and take notes. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't do that. So, you know, when I used to do the events years ago, you'd get your notebook and it's on your lap and you could sit down. Right. And I, you know, I couldn't do that. When I had the herniated disc, you know, we jump up and down a lot and I would have to put one arm down and I would do it like this because I, yeah. I couldn't do it. It's like standing here at my desktop, I would type for a little while, then I'd have to put my arm down and then I would type for a while. So standing, I was okay, but but the lack of lower back pain and the lack of just general neck pain that I used to have. I mean, right now, as I'm standing here talking to you, I have no lower back pain and I have no neck pain. Mm -hmm. And that's just not how I lived my life for a period of years before I went and did the stem cells. That's just not, you know, how it would work. And doing the physical activity, a lot of times I would wake up and that back muscle would be frozen yeah. and I would have to try to get it to break up. And usually I would wear a, mm. a neoprene patch with the lidocaine in it. And I usually had one of those on there and one of those on my lower back when I would do these events. And, you know, I don't have to wear those anymore. And have you been to an event since uh, getting the treatment or? Oh yeah, several. Yeah. And and are I, they very different now, a different experience or? Um, yeah. Were you able to go yeah. along? Well, and I, you know, when I would do the events, I would compartmentalize that pain and I would just enjoy the event. But like I did an event in person in November. Mm -hmm. So I flew down on an airplane, drove a car, as you said, 18 hour days, did the fire walk, you know, did all that stuff and came home without issue. In fact, I met my daughter in the airport in Chicago and O'Hare and we went into Chicago and went to a concert and nice. did all this other stuff. And I, I mean, that's not something I could do 10 years ago. I mean, mm. just, I, mean I just couldn't have done that. I, my neck would have given out. I would have gotten sick. You know, normally um, riding in an airplane like that, doing that, I mean, I would have, I would have needed some downtime mm -hmm. and I'm on my feet the entire time. And yeah, it's, it's a big change. It's a big what, change. What about that's awesome to hear. I mean, you kind of alluded to this a little bit, but what are your friends and family or, you know, your wife, your daughter, what kind of, in, what kind of feedback are you getting from them? Well, surprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, not, not so much surprise that they didn't think it would help. They thought it would help. When we saw that MRI, you know, that, that was, a, that was a big deal. As I went into that MRI, I knew how much better I was feeling. Sure. And I, and I said to my wife, I said, you know, I wonder if the MRI is going to show that or not. And she goes, mm -hmm. you know, look, here's the deal. If it doesn't show it, what, whatever, you feel better. 
So what, however this process worked, it worked for you because you feel significantly better. If it does show it, then you're going to have a great story of success with this idea. And when, and it showed way more than I ever thought it was going to be. Right. And, and so that's now the story. And so now my, my daughter has had some health issues. And so she's excited because she's like, look, I've got this option. You know, this option is out there. And, you know, there's, there's some RA in my family. So some of the people are looking at, at doing that now. And generally my, my dad and mom are, are very happy to see me feel better. I mean, you know, I mean, you see your kid have this catastrophic event when they're in high school and watch them kind of struggle with it. And now all of a sudden they're feeling better when they're, you know, almost 56. And uh, they're just like, you know, that's, that's awesome that that worked out. And my brothers and sisters, you know, they really follow the law. Now, your case is a little bit different from some folks, especially for things like whether it's, you know, COPD or multiple sclerosis. Some people are on a you know, pretty heavy medication regimen, but it sounds like your situation is quite a bit different. It sounds like you were avoiding medication in general, but were there elements of your treatment plan, Tim, that you were able to modify if there were certain medications you were able to taper off? Well, I, I've, I've been able to pretty much get rid of what I did do. Okay, I still do the physical modifications I, I, just because I've gotten used to operating that way, but I have noticed that I can look down and write on some stuff now and I don't, I don't wake up the next day like this. But the big thing is I would take Advil occasionally and I, I don't do that anymore, but the, the patches, those, I mean, I use those patches all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. I, had, I, I would even have to come to work and I had patches here and I would have to ask staff to help me put them on, on my back, those lidocaine patches, okay. because they would get that muscle to open up. Or I would have to go to an assistant and say, look, I need you to put your elbow right there. And I and that muscle would freeze so hard yeah. that it would take an elbow. You couldn't do it with your hand. It would take an elbow and you'd have to just break it apart. And, and I'm not doing that. I used to ice my back every morning. I started mm. out every morning with ice on my lower back while I was doing my morning ritual. And I forgot, I don't do that anymore. I don't ice my back ever. And even with the ice, I still would have problems when I don't have that. What are your future plans for stem cell therapy? I'm not done doing stem cell therapy. I will definitely do it again. And anybody that's thinking about it, you know, I highly recommend. The big thing is, is this stuff can have a very, very positive impact. So you know, take a look, take a look at it and see if it's right for you. Uh, I am super happy that I did it and I can't wait. You know, I'm now getting on a new workout regimen and I can't wait to see where I'm going to be in six months. I really can't. That's awesome. No, it's incredible here. Tim, is there anything else? We've talked about a lot of stuff here. Is there anything else you want to share about your experience i'd like to just thank you for doing it. like i said i dreaded the day when my neck failed since i injured my neck when i was 16 years old and that day ultimately kind of happened a year and a half ago and at that point i had discovered stem cells and i was like you know i, I can't wait to try this and see what it does and it very much went beyond what I even had hoped. And, and I'm not done, I'm only six months in, you know, they're gonna keep working for at least another six months. And so if anybody's thinking about doing it, do it. If anybody wants to talk to me personally, I'd be happy to do that, talk to you about my experience. I told all my, my trainer and senior leader brethren that I did this and here's my results and here's where I went, but I, I had a wonderful experience at your facility and I certainly have had a tremendous response to the treatment and i thank you for that great oh we're so grateful to you tim for entrusting your health to us it's always such a privilege and pleasure and you know we look forward to hearing more about your uh, continued journey with health and we know uh the best is yet to come so so thanks again tim Th thank you thank you very yeah. much